Welcome to a new episode of the Cancer Informant. I'm Dr. Tony Malyoko, the Cancer Informant. Today, we're going to answer some questions that were left on the website from some of our viewers and listeners. I'd remind people that please visit our website of www.cancerinformant.org to review previous podcasts of the Cancer Informant and also to leave suggestions and ask questions that we can address in future episodes. Recently, we had a podcast discussing pancreatic cancer, and one of our viewers wrote in asking about unusual type of pancreatic cancer. The podcast focused on the typical type of adenocarcinoma of the pancreas, which is the commonest type, but the viewer asked about um, neuroendocrine tumors of the pancreas. This is really an interesting point and a very interesting question. Thank you for providing it. So if we were to think about the anatomy of the pancreas, the pancreas is a very important organ that aids in digestion. It's located behind the duodenum and secretes pancreatic juices into this small intestine that facilitate digestion. So it's really got two functions, the pancreas. One is to create the enzymatic juices that aid in digestion and absorption. The pancreas also has a second component. There's actually two parts to the pancreas. The second part of the pancreas is called the endocrine pancreas. And within the pancreas, there are specialized groups of cells called islets of Langerhans. And these are special neuroendocrine or glandular cells that exist that make hormones. They don't make things that are secreted into the bowel. They actually make hormones that go directly into the blood. So the two components of the pancreas are the first, the exocrine pancreas and the acinar cells that make the digestive enzymes that are secreted into the ducts and into the pancreas. And these can give rise to acinar ductal carcinoma or intraductal carcinoma or mucinous carcinoma of the pancreas, which are the prominent types. But the second part of the pancreas is the endocrine cells, which can give rise to endocrine tumors of the pancreas. Now, endocrine tumors are very fascinating um, because they can either be functional or non-functional. They can be also benign or malignant. Now, interestingly, a benign endocrine tumor can cause significant health problems and can, in fact, even cause death. You might ask, how can a benign tumor kill you? Well, the endocrine tumors are quite interesting. So the endocrine cells of the pancreas create certain hormones such as insulin and glucagon and other hormones that are very important for metabolism. You can imagine if a tumor secreted too much insulin that a patient would actually go into hypoglycemia. And if this occurred very quickly, it can lead to death. And that's because the brain is dependent on glucose and sugar. And if your blood sugar level falls too low, the brain will die. It can no longer function if the sugar level is too low. So this is a significant problem. And benign pancreatic tumors can secrete insulin, which can give rise to these spikes and cause problems. Some of the other hormones that can be made by the pancreas cause other digestive problems. For example, there's a hormone called VASO-VIP, or um, uh, it's a hormone that's an intestinal polypeptide, and it can actually lead to significant diarrhea and complications of diarrhea, which can be uh, electrolyte imbalance and other significant problems. So the endocrine um, cells certainly can cause problems even if they're making a benign tumor, if they secrete these hormones inappropriately. Now, these tumors can also become malignant, meaning that they can spread to other organs and cause other problems uh, leading to cancer progression and uh, fatality from the progression of the cancer as they spread to other parts of the body. Now, how are pancreatic islet cell tumors or neuroendocrine tumors identified? Often they present with symptoms such as constipation or diarrhea, 
or problems with metabolism, like we said, if there is unexpected um, changes in sugar metabolism or other unusual hormonal imbalances that that occurred, it may uh, give one to suspect that there could be an underlying neuro and endothermal tumor. Now, also, there are certain risk factors for development of these tumors that can be inherited. There's a condition called MEN, or multiple endocrine neoplasia, where certain genes are inherited from a person's parents, and these can increase the risk of developing neuroendocrine tumors. Now, neuroendocrine tumors can occur in other organs besides the pancreas. They can occur in the small bowel or in the walls of the intestine or even in the appendix. They might occur in other glands, such as the, um, the adrenal gland or the thyroid or elsewhere in the body. So they can really pop up anywhere. Often they're quite localized and can be cured by surgery. Now, another way to diagnose them is with a blood test or a urine test, that endocrine tumors that are functional will actually secrete abnormal hormones into the blood and urine, and these can be detected. These include markers such as chromogranin A, that's a marker of neuroendocrine tumors. Now, neuroendocrine tumors are, are frequently, once they're discovered, treated surgically. And if they're benign and localized, uh, they can be excised and completely cured with a surgical excision. Now, if the tumor has spread or become malignant and high grade, additional therapy might be needed. For example, chemotherapy could be used. And now there are new types of targeted therapy that specifically target neuroendocrine tumors. Radiation can also be used and various types of ablation therapy can also be used for management of, of these types of tumors. Also, it's important that if these tumors are functional and they're producing hormones, that the side effects of these hormones appropriately be managed as well. So if a patient is suffering severe diarrhea or electrolyte imbalance, obviously it's important that those conditions also be taken care of. So that concludes uh, the answer to the question. So I hope that that was helpful in understanding other types of tumors of the pancreas. So in summary, the pancreas really has two parts, a ductal system and an acinar system that gives rise to adenocarcinoma of the pancreas or mucinous carcinoma of the pancreas, and also an endocrine component, which uh, the cells that make hormones like uh, glucagon and insulin can form either benign or malignant tumors. These neuroendocrine tumors are often treated surgically, but there are also new treatments arising that include chemotherapy, targeted agents, and other types of therapy. I hope you found this useful. Please visit our website uh, to listen to previous episodes of The Cancer Informant. And also I encourage you to leave additional questions or suggestions for future episodes. I'm Tony Malioko, the Cancer Informant. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.